So I was editing one day and I looked down at my Mac Mini and thought to myself, let's get a hub. And so I picked up the Satoshi Mac Mini hub. It actually wasn't the ports that I was interested in since I have a hub mounted underneath my desk. It was having the built-in SSD enclosure and just giving my machine a stand. There's one caveat though, and I'll get to that in a sec. So there's two versions of this hub for the Mini. One is without the SSD enclosure, and that one actually comes in two colors, in the silver and the space gray, if you have the Intel loaded Mac Mini. That also came in space gray as well to match. That version is $20 cheaper, and so you might as well spend that extra $20 to get the SSD enclosure. But this version with the SSD enclosure only comes in silver. So the feel and quality of this hub actually feels pretty nice. It's, it's mostly made of plastic all around. The top is kind of a soft touch. There are rubberized feet for where your Mac Mini sits, and then you can see the vents around here, which is a nice addition so that your Mac Mini gets extra air circulation while it's sitting on this hub. There is a little LED light to indicate when it's plugged in and on. So over on the front, you have your ports, you have a micro SD slot, standard SD slot, three and a half millimeter headphone jack, three USB-A ports and a single USB-C port. Now, obviously a lot of people would be getting this hub so that they have accessible ports on the front for their Mac mini since the original design of the Mac mini does not have ports on the front, they're all on the back. And it gives you that kind of Mac studio uh, feel and vibe to it. Over on the bottom, you have the cable holder here and then this is where your SSD goes, so you would just pop that open and that's where you'd install your SSD. So in one of my past videos, when I first checked out the Mac Mini, one of the feedback that I had was the bottom of the Mac Mini does not have any rubberized feet so that it can easily slide around your desk, especially if you're fiddling with cables and plugging things in. What's nice about this hub is that it does have rubberized feet and so when you are plugging things into the ports or even an SD card, you're gonna get that extra grip and so it's not gonna slide around. Before we rip apart the Mini and let it sit on its throne, we need to get an SSD. And here's that caveat that I mentioned earlier. The hub only supports SATA SSDs and not NVMEs. SATA SSDs are older and they're much slower a lot slower. We're talking write speeds that max out at about 550 megabytes per second if you can still find a SATA SSD with that capable speed. Whereas NVMe SSDs max out at three, five, and even seven and a half gigs per second. Plus SATA SSDs are older, and so your options are a little bit more limited, especially if you are in the market for one today. Could you edit off this drive? I think it's doable but we can only know through a test. To install an SSD, you just pop off the cover on the bottom. It also includes a mini screwdriver and screw for your SSD. And then you just plug the SSD in until you get the satisfying snap and then screw it down. Now that the SSD is in, let's go ahead and plug it all in. After powering it on, all the ports worked, but the SSD actually wasn't showing up. And I actually got a pop-up message saying there was a drive that couldn't be used and I could either ignore, eject, or look at the details. So when you click on details, you're taken to disk utility and it shows up as an external drive that was uninitialized. This is important. If disk utility doesn't even show the drive, then it's likely a hardware issue, whether it be damaged connectors or even a faulty SSD. However, for me, it showed up, it was just uninitialized, and so I couldn't really do anything with the drive. Clicking on first aid didn't work, recover didn't work. So what I had to do to get it working was actually click on the erase button here, which would allow my Mac to format the entire SSD. Small thing that sucks though, which is expected, is that on the sidebar, it shows up as an external drive, obviously, but it has the eject button next to it. So if you accidentally click that eject button, it actually ejects your hub and the SSD installed in it. And in order to get it back, you'd have to go behind your Mac mini, unplug the cable and plug it back in which isn't a huge deal. So I ran the Blackmagic speed test to test out the speed of the SSD, and I maxed out at just under 400 megabytes per second, about 385 to 389 to be exact, and editing 4K videos off of it was just okay, doable, but I got some minor stuttering. No frame drops though, so it was probably just the SSD not being able to keep up. 
I normally edit off my Samsung T7 drives, which have read and write speeds of about a gigabyte per second. So that's more than double of this SSD speed. But that gave me an idea on how I can make my editing experience a little bit smoother. So I've been editing with rendering turned off. The M2 Pro is fast enough to edit 4K videos with most stuff that I throw at it without rendering the timeline. However, once you start throwing heavier things like transitions, noise reduction, or even optical flow to slow down, you know, 24 frames per second footage in DaVinci, that's when it bogs down a little bit. So what I would usually do is just render that one clip. In video editing softwares, you can have automatic rendering turned on so that you can have a much smoother editing experience. The drawback of this is that it eats up your storage really fast, which is why I had rendering turned off completely. Now when I'm editing a project, I can just have the render cache file stored into this SSD so that it speeds things up. Another thing I like about this hub are the micro SD and the SD slots. They're spring loaded slots so you get that satisfying resistance and click when you are plugging in an SD card or when you're ejecting it. Overall, it's a great hub. It gives you all the ports that you need. They're accessible now on the front of your Mac Mini, except it only gives you one USB-C port. I would much rather have it so that they swapped out one of the USB-A ports for a USB-C port so you get two of each. This isn't a huge deal if you have the M2 Pro Mac Mini since you have the extra Thunderbolt or USB-C ports on the back of your Mini. But if you have the regular M2 Mini, then you're still only at two available USB-C ports. I like the build and quality of it. It matches the Mac Mini pretty closely. The SSD enclosure is a plus and you should just opt for it for an extra $20. Just sucks that it only supports SATA and not NVMe drives, but maybe Satoshi's working on an updated version to support an NVMe drive. Link is down in the description if you're interested in picking one up. Hope you found this video helpful. Give it a like, subscribe to the channel so that we can continue to grow and build this community and channel together. See you in the next one.